In this tutorial, we'll add beautiful flowers to Minecraft. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we will add a custom flower to the game and we'll also make it spawn in the world. So a custom flower on its own is actually not that complicated. We're going to copy the redwood sapling here as an example, and we are going to make a hyacinth. And the reason I'm going to make a hyacinth is because I just really love spelling the word. <laughs> It's, yeah, definitely make sure that you write this correctly everywhere. This is going to be probably the most error-prone video I've done for a while. However, after we've made it Hyacinth here and then given the name Hyacinth, we're going to make this a new flower block. Now, the new flower block actually requires three parameters, and the first isn't a tree. The first is actually an effect. So we're going to do effects dot, for example, let's do haste. And then we'll make effect duration. We'll make it like, I don't know, 20, something like that. And we can actually see if we hover over the flower block and then press Alt and F7, then oh, we expand this. We can actually see that, oh, so 20 is actually a lot. We can see that, for example, dandelions give saturation, saturation, night vision, resist fire resistance, blindness. Put that to a two is probably better. 20 is a little too much. If a suspicious stew is made with a hyacinth in this case, then you would get this effect for this duration. And of course, we want this from the dandelion, let's see. So dandelion, there you go. So that is how easy it is actually to add the flower. We need one more thing uh, for it to actually properly display. And that is in the tutorial mod class. We want to simply go down. Oh, we want to go down here to the do client stuff and just uh, duplicate this line. So control D to duplicate it. And then we'll say hi, in here. So this also gets the get cutout because we once again have a block that is displayed in a little bit of a different way. And flowers are actually done in a cross pattern. And we're going to see this soon enough when we look at the model. That's actually all the code requires, at least for making the flower. We're soon going to see what the generation entails. However, let's first of all add the JSON files. Right, I'm quickly going to copy over the block states JSON. And as you can see, it is a normal block states JSON. So you can basically take any of your normal block states JSON files, copy it. Or of course, you can also go down into the description to the GitHub repository and get the JSON files from there. The models are a bit more interesting. So the block model, if we copy this one over, you can see that it has the block slash cross parent. And then we have the cross pattern here instead of having all or block all in this case. So this is a little bit different, but also not too interesting. So this simply makes it so that the block is displayed in a cross pattern or the, rather the texture. And the item actually doesn't point back to the block model. It actually is the texture itself. So as you can see, this simply points once again to the block texture in this case. So this is a something that's a little bit different. So instead of having this in the item folder here in textures, we simply leave it in the block texture because it's going to be the same texture anyway. So why would we need it twice? Doesn't really make sense. So yeah, I can just... Uh, copy over the PNG as well. So now the texture is in here as well. And that's actually all we need to add the flower. Now this was requested with a bush. The thing about it is that the flower block actually extends bush block. So there really isn't that much of a difference here in terms of uh, what's happening. So overall, this should be fairly easily translatable between the two. Now the flower has been added, of course, let's not forget to add the translation as well. And now let's see what the world generation entails. Right, overall, the world generation is actually not that difficult. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the mod configured features class and middle mouse button click on the feature class here. So this is the feature class that contains a whole bunch of features from Minecraft, basically. And we're gonna see right below the tree, we have the flowers feature. And if we middle mouse button click on that, we can actually get to the features class as well. So this is the class that contains all of the registered features. And we can now see how this is done in vanilla. So for example, the flower warm, there's uh, different types of flowers. There's default flowers, forest, swamp, plain, plain decorated. So there's different types of sort of flower groups that spawn. And we can see that it takes the feature.flower with configuration. That's pretty normal. And then usually it gets some configs here. In the case of the forest, it actually makes a new configuration here. For example, with a builder, here we have a blue orchid, simple block state provider. So there's a bunch of different ways that we can do this. If I can, if I go here, you can see that it actually is quite a long while. We are going to copy over the flower plane here just uh, because that's going to make it a little bit easier for us. So we're just going to copy this over uh, in its entirety is fine. And then we're going to make a new public static final configured feature question mark question mark. And that's going to be the 
hyacinth underscore config. And that's going to be equal to what we've just copied. Now we have to actually make a few adjustments here, quite a bit actually, but no worries whatsoever. So let's format this a little bit differently. Uh, something like that. That's okay. And then we have one too many parentheses there. And then instead of the plain flower block state provider, we want to make a new simple block state provider and then get in the mod blocks dot hyacinth dot get dot get default state. Now we're not done yet because uh, first of all, we actually don't want this to try 64 times. That's actually a few too many times. Let's do it 12 times. And then after the end here, we also want this to be with placement. And then we're going to choose the features dot placements dot height map placement and then dot count. And now we can sort of decide how many we want. Let's do three for the time being. Actually, let's do five just so that we get an abundance of those flowers spawning because that's always I find that if you want to test out the world generation, it's best to basically almost times five your number. That's like the best idea. And then just get an abundance of what you want to see. And then just lower your number and then still try to find it. Now, if it's, of course, something like, hey, I want this flower to spawn like once every 10,000 blocks. Well, to test that, you're going to either have to really trust your code or you're just going to take the time and, and try to find it. But overall, I think that that's fine. And that's actually all we really need. We don't really need to make a new feature or anything like that. That should be enough. Yeah, and this will be then called in a new class. So in the gen package, right click new Java class, and that is the mod flower generation. There's a good point of saying that instead of having a mod flower generation and a mod tree generation, we could also have a mod vegetal decoration generation. Well, that's a pretty mouthful. It does sort of make sense but it really depends on what you want to do. So it's not required or it's not really, it, it basically comes down to personal preference, if I'm absolutely honest. So generate flowers is going to be this one. And this is going to be, could you guess it, a biome loading event called event. And then this. Now you can actually take the mod tree event and basically copy all of this over because this is a almost exactly the same. So the only thing that we're going to change here is this base. So we're going to delete that and we'll put in the mod configured features dot hyacinth config. That's actually it. That's all we really need to do in order to spawn this properly. And that's pretty much it. We can clean this up a little bit. There you go. Once we actually call the generate flowers method, it's going to be fine. So in the mod world events, after the mod or generation, we want to do mod flower generation dot generate flowers event. So once again, this is important that these two are grouped together. And, and after the mod or generation, because of the way that the world generation stages work. If you think back to the decoration here, you can see that we have the underground ores first and then we get the vegetal decoration. We can't do vegetal decoration ores and then vegetal decoration again. So we have to stick to this order, otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, that's why it should be in between or after the mod tree generation that also works, but they have to be sort of grouped together. So it might actually be a good case to do something like this. So we know that, okay, those two belong together, but that's actually all we need to spawn the flower in game. So I would say, let's see if it works. And of course, don't forget to actually create a new world because we've messed with the world generation again, just a quick reminder. All right, we actually luckily spawned into a plains biome. So that's actually kind of nice. And there you go. There are my flowers. And so what I want to say definitely is that I personally really like the textures. I think that I've gotten better with the textures and I actually think that this is a this is a workable flower texture. I think that it could definitely be improved and maybe you're going to say, well, a hyacinth, I'm not sure about that. Fair enough. But the main thing is that it spawns in the world and that's how easy it is. Now, of course, as you can clearly see, it is way too much or maybe it's not. Maybe it's that that's exactly what you want. This is actually how easy it is. And now, of course, tweak the numbers, right? You can tweak the number with the tries. You can tweak the numbers with the count, how many are going to spawn. And you can also, of course, tweak a little bit of the feature. So if we go back to the mod configured features, I, like I said, I would have put in three here maybe and then we can also make a few less tries here you could of course also choose a different placement here as well so there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can try the thing about the world generation like i've said multiple times already is you got to try out some stuff and you can of course always go into the features class and take a look at how vanilla does it right but that would be or but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would, of course, appreciate a like. And I will see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah, 